Happy New Year's everybody. It's the end of the year, which means it's time for everyone to count down their favorite roller coasters, including myself. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I do 25 days of coasters, counting down to Christmas Day every year. But I also post a video here expanding the list with my top 50. While this year only got two new credits, I changed up some of my rankings based on rerides and just changing my opinions. I'll make sure to show where it ranked last year if it was on my list to show you how much it's changed. Also, just remember that this is my opinion and we may not share the same ideas. If you agree or disagree with me, tell me in the comments below. I'm going to try to start responding to all of my comments in some way, shape, or form. So anyways, let's get into it. Starting out the top 25 is Gale Force at Playland's Castaway Cove in Ocean City, New Jersey. Gale Force is the only coaster from SNS on this list, and it's also the world's only launched El Loco ever built. It's hard yet easy to see why this is the only one. On one hand, Gale Force is an incredible ride with crazy ejector airtime, positives and laterals, it's compact and it's cheap too. However, since the day construction started, this ride had major issues. The track wasn't aligned correctly. The original train couldn't traverse the course correctly, and it was rough. The ride opened a year late to mixed reviews, and it was eventually retracted, but it still had a lot of issues. However, I highly recommend you come and ride this thing if you are in New Jersey because it's easily a top coaster on the East Coast. Number 24, Storm Runner at Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Easily one of Intamin's finest creations. It has a punchy launch, intense positive forces that compete with other rides like Intimidator 305, strong airtime, and one of the world's best inversions, the Flying Snake Dive. Storm Runner ends with a bang and with its punchy twisted double up right into the brakes. It may be a short ride, but it packs so much into that short duration. Number 23, for Bolton at Busch Gardens Williamsburg in Williamsburg, Virginia. This ride was marketed as a family coaster, which is such a lie. Verbolton is a very intense coaster focusing on theming, scenery, and positive forces. The ride features two punchy launches, awesome theming, a super intense helix in the show building, a nice surprise, and then an awesome drop down to the Rhine River with a little bit of float of air time. When I got on this last year, I truly did not expect such a full package of a ride. This also gives one of the best night rides ever, which was my first ride on this and I was absolutely blown away by it. Number 22. 
Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds in Bristol, Connecticut. Boulder Dash is the first wooden coaster on the list, and this one is a special one. I need to get some re-rides on this thing since the last time I went on it was 2020. From what I can remember, the ride has super intense laterals, great floater airtime, and my favorite location of any coaster out there. I really need to get back there and get some night rides on it because there's no way they aren't good. I can imagine they'd ravel rides like Voyage and Beast in terms of night rides. Number 21, Thunderhead at Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Another super solid wooden coaster with strong airtime, laterals, a decently long ride, and isn't too rough but isn't too smooth either. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've probably heard me talk about the quote unquote wooden bite that I like that wooden coasters have. It's, it's still smooth, but it's also still a wooden coaster. It's hard to describe uh, unless you've actually ridden a wooden coaster that has that feeling. Number 20, Mystic Timbers at Kings Island in Mason, Ohio. Another GCI, and this one is my favorite, slightly beating out Thunderhead. While Thunderhead features airtime pops heading in and out of turns, Mystic has full-blown ejector airtime hills as its main layout. It's rare GCI makes an out and about coaster, but I think they definitely need to make more. I'm also appreciative of the shed. It's a fun little theming element while you wait for the train and the station to dispatch. It's better than just stacking and sitting there doing nothing in my opinion. Number 19, Mind Blower at Fun Spot Kissimmee in Kissimmee, Florida. Last time I rode this was 2021 and I should hopefully be getting more rides on it very soon. Many people do not like this ride at all, including my girlfriend Audrey. She thought it had a great layout, but it was too rough for her. I, on the other hand, actually really enjoyed it. It has a super fast paced intense layout with ejector airtime and one of the jankiest inversions ever. A super fast zero G roll. Off ride it looks slow and grateful, but the way the track works is like you snap into it, almost do a stall instead of a roll in the actual roll, and then snap right back up into the intense turn afterwards. I'm looking forward to checking out what this ride is like with the new RMC steel track to see if it improves the experience or just makes it worse. Number 18, Phoenix at Knobles. Another fantastic wooden coaster with amazing airtime, Phoenix is said to be the world's best wooden coaster, according to the group of so-called voters, or sellouts, over at the Golden Ticket Awards. All jokes aside, this is deserving of its title, just not in my opinion. Thanks to the profiling of the hills and the awesome buzz bar restraints, Phoenix provides some awesome standing airtime over every single hill and it just gets stronger throughout the layout. The ride also features some good laterals around the turns and it's fairly smooth to ride. Knobles not only takes great care of their rides, but they also have their own lumber yard so it makes it even easier to maintain such a great and historical coaster. Number 17, Raven at Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana. After getting some re-rides on Phoenix this year, I decided to drop it below Raven. Phoenix felt just a little slower and more controlled this year than in years past, so naturally the out of control Raven went above it. Raven has an insane start to finish. At first, it starts out with high energy first half, filled with large turns full of laterals and large airtime hills with plenty of strong floater airtime. After a turn over the lake, the train rides up towards the top of the trees, giving some small pops of airtime and laterals, and then heads down into the woods with an ejector airtime filled drop. The rest of the ride is super fast, low bank turns, providing super strong laterals. Raven is short, but it provides a super strong, aggressive ride, and is easily one of the best coasters at Holiday World and in the Midwest. Number 16, Orion at Kings Island in Mason, Ohio. Getting back to some steel coaster, we have the best giga coaster in Ohio. Most people trash it for being a short or lackluster ride, but I completely disagree. Orion has amazing airtime on quite a few hills, one of my favorite drops ever, and even some moments of good positive g-forces. It may not be the craziest ride, but a super well-rounded one for sure. Number 15, Mako at SeaWorld Orlando in Orlando, Florida. As of right now, this is my favorite B&M coaster. Obviously this could change if I ride another ride like Fury 325 at Carowinds, but for now, this is it. This basically does everything Orion does, but on a much smaller scale and it provides a little bit more airtime. This is commonly said to be one of the best, if not the best B&M Hyper, and I completely agree. Number 14, Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey. This is easily one of the most underappreciated coasters in the world. Many people rode this prototype second generation Raptor in 2021 when it ran a decent bit slower than it does now. 
but the ride has since had some work done to it and it's broken in so it's running at its fastest now. This ride features tons of ejector airtime, laterals, and even some great positive forces around the valleys and tighter turns. What really elevates this ride to its high of a ranking is the insane drop this ride has. Ride this in the back row and you'll see what I mean. JDC also provides a great night ride since it's in its own little area against the woods and the lake. Number 13, Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England in Agawam, Massachusetts. This is another super underappreciated RMC, but this one I can kind of see why. This is probably my second most ridden RMC besides JDC. I've seen this thing run as slow as can be, but also rode this in 2016 when it was still in its prime. This ranking is based on my last rides, which were during the summertime, and it was absolutely hauling ass, however, not to what it was like its opening year in 2016. Each hill provides crazy airtime, and this one also features a lot of lateral forces, which I really love. In fact, this ride pretty much created my love for lateral forces. Easily one of the best layouts ever produced by Alan Schilke. Number 12, Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg in Williamsburg, Virginia. This is still a ride that completely shocked me. Going in, I was expecting some okay intimate launch coaster with some fun forces, but I was completely blown away. The inversions give some of the best hang time out there, and of course, that launch sequence is incredible. Flying backwards over that speed hill on the launch is a feeling like no other, and the rest of the ride is packed with an amazing drop, fun twists, and of course, that awesome outer bank turn. Number 11, Maverick at Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. This is easily one of Intamin's best coasters. This ride has something for everybody too. Punchy launches, insane airtime, fast pacing, scenery, and of course, whippy transitions. This is such a well-rounded ride and I just really wish I had more rides on this thing because of the two trips I've had to Cedar Point of two days each, I've only gotten three total rides on this thing and it's really sad and it's really just because this ride always has such a long line, especially now with Steel Vengeance next to it and it's low capacity. But either way, still a fantastic roller coaster. Number 10, Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom in Louisville, Kentucky. Easily one of the most aggressive coasters ever made, once this thing warms up, it does not let up. This is easily one of those coasters where the second half is better than the first, especially with that trick track double up being one of my favorite elements ever, although the ending sequence pretty much is, is in general. It's not the biggest ride, or really the prettiest ride, because this, I'm not gonna lie, this part of the park is pretty ugly, but it's something that can truly pack a punch. This is pretty much the definition of don't judge a book by its cover. Number 9, Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion in Doswell, Virginia. Slated as the world's most intense coaster, and it's really not hard to see why. It's a 300 foot drop right into a tight low to the ground turn, which most people gray or black out on. I personally never blacked out on it, but I've been really close to graying out. It has some of the snappiest twists of any coaster and sustained ejector airtime moments. It's not for everyone, but it's certainly for the most die-hard coaster enthusiasts out there. Number 8, The Voyage at Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana. While it technically isn't the longest wooden coaster in the world, it's the longest wooden coaster in the world that actually does something with its layout. <clears throat> Beast. Voyage has tons of airtime, like pretty much had the most airtime in the world of any coaster until 2018, tons of airtime. The setting is perfect, going deep into the woods and following the terrain. Every single hill has tons of floater airtime, the turns have some decent laterals on them, and not to mention, it has probably the best night ride of any coaster in the world. When you're back in that spaghetti bowl section, which is the very back side of the ride, you literally cannot see a thing. It's like pretty much having your eyes closed. Number 7. Skyrush at Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Skyrush is essentially Intimidator 305, but smaller and focuses more on airtime rather than positive Gs. A horrifying drop with a double pop of airtime, super tight valleys that pack on the insane force, probably the strongest airtime hills of any coast in the world, and crazy lateral twists. Skyrush simply features the extreme side of each type of force found on a roller coaster. Also not to mention, I know I'm in the minority here, but I love the trains. They are easily the most open feeling trains, and if you set the lap bar on your lap instead of your legs, you'll be fine. You won't get that thigh crushing feeling that everyone always talks about. Number 6, finally being at Skyrush as the best coaster in the park is Wildcat's Revenge. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this would be number 2 or maybe even number 3 in the park behind Stormrunner, but I was beyond wrong. This thing features just as much of an intense ride as Skyrush, but with quote unquote 
better trains. So it's much more loved by the general public and even some enthusiasts, but mainly the general public. This was one of two new coasters I got on in 2023, and it was absolutely incredible. Every element is a standout on this ride. Number 5 is El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey. This coaster has literally never left my top 5 coasters, and I've talked about this ride every year. So anyways, uh, best drop in the world, airtime, airtime, intensity, airtime, airtime, intensity, airtime, uh, airtime. Okay, cool, El Toro's amazing. Number 4, Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point and Sandusky, Ohio. Known as one of the best coasters in the world, and it's really not hard to see why. It's got tons of airtime, like literally so much of it. It currently holds the record of the most airtime in the world. However, this ride also features some top-notch inversions, a little bit of laterals, and it's a tad repetitive, which is why it's not higher, but still such an amazing ride. Number 3, Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion in Donswell, Virginia. This is another crazy ass ride, but features a little bit more variety and ever so slightly stronger airtime than Steel Vengeance, which is primarily why it's above it. I know it's smaller, I know it's shorter, I know it's, you know, it's not Steel Vengeance, but I personally have always liked this ride just a little bit more. I really need to get back on this since my last rides were in 2021, and this is easily one of RMC's finest creations. I always find that their smaller coasters are a lot less problematic than their bigger ones, I should say. Number 2. Lightning Rod at Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. To be clear, this is Wood Lightning Rod, with the launch. The one that actually ran fast, even though when I rode it, it was considered slow, 2019 Lightning Rod makes the current one look even slower. Either way, this is still an amazing coaster. The uphill launch had so much force to it, and it was just actually way better than I was expecting. The setting of the coaster was immaculate deep in the woods and through the mountains. The quad down is probably one of the best finales of the of a ride period and of course besides voyage this is probably my favorite night ride it's simply incredible this is also ever so slightly rough not rough but it had that bite to it it was much smoother than other wooden coasters even smoother than El Toro and honestly I don't understand the people who call this rough because it really wasn't I'm really interested to see how the new version without the launch is going to run hopefully I'll get on sometime soon and at number one is Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa in Tampa, Florida. This is easily RMC's best coaster. This thing packs in so much punch too. It's massive, it provides super strong airtime, it has some of my favorite elements ever, like that death roll and the outward banked wave turn. It's got crazy laterals and even features strong positive g-force, which is very rare for RMC. This is essentially the RMC version of Skyrush or I-305, and I cannot wait to hopefully get more rides on it very soon. Thanks for watching everybody, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, and of course, comment your favorite coasters down below, and whether you agree or disagree with my list. Sorry this video came out a little bit later than it usually does, I always try to get this out on New Year's Eve, but, you know, I had was just busy so I couldn't get it, so here it is now. Hope you guys have a fantastic 2023, just like me, and I'm wishing you guys the best 2024, and I'll see you guys in the next one.